As students of prophecy, we have been expecting what was just announced just the other day. Check this out. Paul Ryan says America needs Catholicism. Let me scroll down just a little bit here. It says House Speaker Paul Ryan made the case Thursday for Catholicism as a faith that can help solve the country's problems. Ryan, who is Catholic, lamented at the National Catholic Prayer Breakfast what he sees as a deepening sense of identity politics and tribalism in the country, as well as a trend of moral relativism that is becoming more and more pervasive. And just so you know, he's not going to be the last one to suggest this in the coming days. And how do I know this? Not only was it prophesied that Rome will create a new world order based on a socialistic format, wherein so-called religious laws based on Roman Catholicism, which is biblically defined as a cult, will be the norm. The popes of Rome, as well as many Vatican prelates, have declared over the last century or so their bold desires to take over the USA completely. And for those that don't believe me on this, notice the following quotes from many Roman Catholic politicians and church leaders over the years. This first one says, There is one and only one sure democracy, the Catholicism of the popes. And that's why Ryan said what he said. The next one says, The old Protestant culture is about at the end of its rope. Why can't we make the U.S. Catholic in legislation, Catholic in justice, aims and ideals? And the next one says, If Catholics ever gain sufficient numerical majority in this country, religious freedom is at an end. So our enemies say, so we believe. In the book, Confusion Twice Confounded, Monsignor Joseph H. Brady states that the U.S. Supreme Court is wrong in decisions regarding separation of church and state. He says a sound view of the Constitution in its relation to religion probably awaits a change in personnel in our highest tribunal. And then the next one says, but constitutions can be changed and non-Catholic sects may decline to such a point that the political prescription or ban of them may become feasible and expedient. And they actually state what protection would they have against the Catholic state? And then this next one says, under the influence of Germanic customs and concepts, torture was little used from the 9th to the 12th centuries. But with the revival of Roman law, the practice was reestablished in the 12th century. In 1252, Pope Innocent IV sanctioned the infliction of torture by the civil authorities upon heretics, and torture came to have a recognized place in the procedure of the inquisitional courts. And by the way, John Paul II declared all non-Catholics are heretics, and now John Paul II is considered a saint. And then finally, during the Reagan administration, President Ronald Reagan, after much pressure, appointed an ambassador to Vatican City. When W. Kenneth Dan was asked why we need an ambassador in Vatican City, he replied, it would allow the USA to influence the political decisions of the Roman Catholic Church. Not only was Dan's statement under the authority of Ronald Reagan an illegal suggestion as it openly violates Amendment No. 1 of the U.S. Constitution, that man actually lied about the reason for that ambassador. And Paul Ryan's comment just proved that today. The reason for that ambassador to Vatican City was to assure the Catholic Church was now going to influence the political positions of the USA from that day forward. And every American alive today can see that has come to a reality, thanks to many Roman Catholic politicians in our government bowing to the popes in Rome the last few decades. Do you remember this statement made in our nation's infancy? Most have never even seen it. It's definitely not going to be shared in the history books of any public schools. It says, if the liberties of the American people are ever destroyed, they will fall by the hand of the Roman Catholic cult's clergy. That statement was made by General Lafayette under President George Washington. Lafayette knew exactly what he was dealing with back then. And so it wasn't hard to wax prophetic knowing what he did about the Vatican's bloodthirstiness. He knew, like everyone else back then, that the American nation started because many people fled those countries wherein popes were torturing and killing their loved ones during their prophesied 1,260-year rampage that Jesus declared to be the Great Tribulation. And yes, thanks to the hirelings that bowed to Rome on the pulpits all the way up till today, Billions of Christians now think that the Great Tribulation is still future because of all those Vatican indoctrinated pastors today. This is why everything from Sunday Sabbath to homosexual marriage is being embraced by all those churches. Now do you see why the Vatican is a church and a sovereign state? 
It's so they could bring the lies of their dying God into both the governing halls as well as the churches of the world. And so again, it wasn't hard for General Lafayette to see what all of us see right now. Still, most won't believe this truth I just presented, as it is very unpopular for those who prefer lies as their comfort zone. But those with eyes that see truth, as per the hand of the God they love, they will understand once this truth comes before them. And it is for them we must go forth and proclaim this present truth. Thank you for watching. God bless.